previously on. To think that I've spent all my time and energy to get out of a vault, only to come into another one. Unbelievable. I meant you said that. We step through this door, get ready for anything. Now back to Fallout 4, Episode 8. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read through the new issue of Public Occurrences. Especially since, from what Piper's sister is telling me, it's actually selling mad copies. So I really want to know exactly what the paper is about. Because if mad people are like getting this copy, I definitely gotta check it out. So let me take a look here. Okay, so there's three parts to the news article that Piper wrote. So let's check it out. View from the Vault, Part 1, by Piper Wright. Whenever I take a walk through Diamond City, there are so many things people tell me to be grateful for. Purified water, working lights, electricity, security. True, what we have would have been unthinkable even a few decades ago. But it's easy to forget that, even after all the progress we have made, we are still living in the shadow of the world that was. A world before the threat of radiation, before the super mutant and the feral gull and the synth. So, as fortune often has it, I cross paths with Denise, Vault Dweller, a person who is experiencing the Commonwealth for the first time. What would her first set of eyes say about how far we've come? Is Diamond City the great green jewel we have always claimed it to be? Before we begin to answer that question, we have to know who Denise is, where she comes from. To my surprise, she did not have much to say about her life in the vault at all, because she spent all that time staring at a piece of frozen glass. Every day, for over two centuries, that's right. Denise isn't just a vault dweller, she's an original vault dweller. She spent her entire time on the inside cryogenically suspended. Ooh, this is getting good. Okay. I actually do like the way Piper's pr painting a picture, and especially how she's introducing my character in all of this as well. Okay, so View from a Vault Part 2 by Piper Wright. So what does Denise have to say about seeing Diamond City for the first time? Honestly, seeing everyone surviving out here, rebuilding the world, gives me hope. Hope. When was the last time someone in our city talked about hope, who wasn't some politician fishing for points in the next election, making empty promises at the wall? But our outsider hasn't let the cynicism of our strange world get the better of her. This is all the more remarkable because of the reason she came to the Commonwealth. You see, Denise has a son, Sean, and even though they were in the relative safety of a vault. Someone broke in and took Sean from his parent, and that parent is now risking everything, wandering through the strange and unfriendly world of ours, in order to save Sean from his kidnappers. We all know the rumors and whispers that surround every missing person in Diamond City, the guilty looks we pass to mourning family members as we thank the wall that this time it wasn't us. You can end up dead in the Commonwealth for a million reasons. Why spend our time worrying about kidnappings? Why indeed? Damn, I really like this. Okay, okay. Part 3. <clears throat> View from the Vault, Part 3, by Piper Wright. It's easy for us to be cynical about the missing. We have spent so long knowing the Institute is out there, but understanding so little about them. 
they are not the only ones responsible for kidnappings, but the fact that they sometimes are, and the fact that we have been so powerless to stop them when they do, causes us to treat all victims of kidnappings as if they are a lost cause. But the people left behind, those loved ones, friends, and neighbors, who may never see the faces of those taken from them again, they do not have the luxury of being able to just look away. They have to carry that loss with them, even if, if everyone else tells them to move on and forget. I asked Denise to make a statement to Diamond City, to give us an outsider's perspective on what it means to lose a loved one and how he feels. Maybe in some way it's how we all should feel. Maybe we've forgotten what the right human response to these tragedies are. Find who's responsible and make them pay, she said. Simple as that. Holy shit! I could definitely see why this this paper is flying off the shelves. Yeah. You're 200 years old? Yeah. Looking pretty well, good for your age, huh? Are you flirting with me? Oh my god. Wow. Honestly, am I a MILF at this point? No, I'm actually beyond a MILF at this point. I'm 200 years old. I'm definitely more than a MILF at this point. But anyways, I could see why this paper is flying off the shelves, like... Well, she's my troublemaker, so I don't care. Anyways, it's amazing, like... It's very compelling. I'm very moved. The way she just not only gives off all the details, but she at I just like the way Piper writes, to be honest. Like, it's fucking amazing. I could definitely see why she's a journalist. Like, I can't wait to tell Piper thank, Piper thank you, because this paper definitely moved me, that's for sure. Uh oh. Ooh. Oh God, it's really you. Aww. It's hard to mistake this mug for anyone else. <laughs> you keep laughing at death. Someday death's gonna laugh back. Not as long as I got a few friends to back me up. You saved Nick, this agency, and my job. Thank you. Honey, you're good. Little detective delivery at your service. <laughs> in a niche market, that's for sure. Here, I know an amount wasn't on the table when you went out to find him, but you deserve a reward. Plus a little something extra. You know, Ooh. if you're looking for work and don't mind putting on the detective hat, Nick sure could use a new partner. Whoa. One case at a time, Ellie. Our new friend needs our help first. All right, let's get down to business. Take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Well, I got paid, bro. You can tell Ellie really cares about. When you're trying to find someone who's gone missing, the devil is in the details. Tell me everything you can, no matter how painful it might be. Whew, okay. Yeah, this is going to be releasing the Pandora box. One big heartache at a time. Um, where should I start? I mean, a lot of things happened. All at once, like... Okay. I know, Valentine, I'm sorry, I'm just... Hmm. We were in a vault when it happened. Uh, vault 111. It was some kind of cryo facility. You were on ice, huh? Yeah. More importantly, you were underground, sealed up. A lot of obstacles you got through just to take one person. You got what a point there. Honestly, you really do got a point because it took me one hell of a time to get out of there. So imagine not only trying to find the place, but getting inside as well. It's like... There was a man and a woman. and They didn't say much, but but I remember they, they called me the backup. So we're talking a small team. Professionals. The kind that know to keep their lips tight when job. Not sure what the backup means, though. Anything else you remember? 
My husband was murdered. Mm -hmm. He was just trying to keep them from taking Sean, and they they just just. It's okay. You don't need to say anything more. So we're <sighs> talking about a group of cold-hearted killers. But they waited until something went wrong to resort to violence. Anything else you remember? We're looking for my baby, Sean. He's less than a year old. Why would anyone take him? Good question. Why your family in particular? Why an infant? That's true. Would be taking on all of his care, and a baby needs a lot of it. Well, that confirms it. This isn't a random kidnapping. Whoever took your kid had an agenda. Hmm. There's a lot of groups in the Commonwealth that take people. Raiders. Super mutants, the gunners, and of course there's the institute. Oh God, the institute! I keep hearing about the institute, but does anyone really know exactly who's the institute? So you think this institute is responsible? Well, they're the boogeymen of the Commonwealth. If something goes wrong, everyone blames them. Easy to see why. Those early model synths of theirs strip whole towns for parts, killing everything in their way. Oh then wow. You got the newer models, good as humans, infiltrate cities and pull strings from the shadows. Worst of all, no one knows why they do it, what their plan is, or where they are. Not even me. And I'm a synth myself. A discarded prototype anyway. Oh my god, you're a fucking synth? <sighs> Don't lie to me, Nick. You're one of them. They made you. Yeah, I've heard it all before. You're a freak. Got something to hide. Blah blah blah. But the truth is, people smart enough to build something like me are smart enough to cover their tracks. And arrogant enough to throw their unwanted trash into the Commonwealth to fend for itself. You know what? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been disgusted right away. I mean people like to make sense look like all of these fucking monsters in all reality based off of my interaction with you you're everything in the head, I can relate. <laughs> cute <sighs> you're not a monster Valentine and honestly I'm sorry for being disgusted but you're not bad after all you're really not and I do appreciate you and it's <sighs> it's you're right. Hold on. <laughs> You're a prototype? As far as I know. Never seen any other synth like myself. There's the older ones that are dumb as rocks and all metal. And there's the newer ones that are almost human. I'm somewhere in between. Oh, okay. You don't know anything about them. Really? Some kind of security setting strips or blocks out those memories. And it's not just me. Any synth that gets trashed, left behind, or escapes the Institute has the same problem. Probably some kind of failsafe. Well, this Institute is pretty fucking slick, if I do say so myself. Either way, I need to find Sean. Right. The speculation is getting us off track. Let's focus on what you saw. What did these kidnappers look like? The woman was dressed in, uh... I think it was kind of a hazard suit. The man had some sort of metal brace on his arm. Maybe some kind of improvised armor? A lot of hired guns do that to look tough. Okay. Hazard suit is interesting. Not many mercs can afford something that fancy. Maybe. What else do you remember about them? Maybe it wasn't a merc. Maybe it was some sort of alleged scientist. The man who my husband he had a handgun I didn't get a clear look at it but that sound could have been a large caliber revolver huh I'm starting to get a clearer picture of the kind of man our perp is anything more you can tell me one of them came right up to me bald head scar across his left eye 
You didn't hear the name Kellogg at all, did you? No, I did not. No. They never said their names. Hmm. Way too big of a coincidence. Ellie, what notes do we have about the Kellogg case? The description matches. Bald head, scar, reputation for dangerous mercenary work, but no one knows who his employer is. And he bought a house here in town, right? Wait, what? He had a kid with him, didn't he? What? Right, the house in the abandoned West Stands. The boy with him was around 10 years old. What the fuck? There's no way that could be Sean. Yeah, big difference between an infant and a 10 year old, but that doesn't mean we're on the wrong track. He could have a son of his own. Maybe he's turned kidnapping into a bad habit. Son In of event, a bitch. Both vanished a while back. No trace. Let's you and I take a walk over to Kellogg's last known address. See if we can snoop out where he went. Security doesn't really go to that part of town, but you two should still be careful. I always am. That's right, he has my back too. Fuck that shit. Oh, sorry about your fan, man. Didn't mean to. I'll leave it there. Anyways. I can't believe it. So, the kidnapper and murderer, his name is Kellogg. And it's... I didn't want Ellie to hear this, but I think you should know. What? Everything I dug up about Kellogg before his disappearance? Bad news. What do you mean? More than just a mercenary. He's a professional. Quick, clean, thorough. Has no enemies, because they're all dead. What? Except you. Nine to one odds says he's our man. More than just you identifying his distinguishing features. The M.O. is all him as well. Leading a small team to kidnap a baby and leaving one of the parents alive for later. Not many mercs in the Commonwealth can pull that off. Question is, how come he didn't kill me? Because technically, what if I survived it and I go after him? Is he not worried about that type of retaliation at all? Because if he's not, then he's pretty fucking bold to assume that. Here we are. Hey, Valentine. Hold your horses. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's one heck of a lock. Something to hide, Kellogg. So this is his fucking place. Uh. Tight. Nah, I can't, buddy. I don't have the locking capability. Stubborn lock, ain't it? Through that door. See that platform in the distance? Mm -hmm. The city entrance? That's the elevator to the mayor's office. Why don't you go ask around there? I'll stay here and see if I can jimmy this lock. Okay. I can do that. Hmm. Fucking bastard. Kellogg. Stupid ass name. Shit. Being named after a fucking cereal? <sighs> yeah. Thank you. No sense scared the hell out of me. Nikki, he ain't like those institute psychos. I agree. At first, I was scared, but fuck it. Even though he's a synth, he's a legit good, decent person. So, that right there shows that not all synths are scary monsters and shouldn't be treated as such. Wow, look at this. Diamond City. Definitely rough around the edges, that's for sure. Now let's see if this fucking mayor is gonna help me because he definitely did me dirty by not really assisting me in finding my kid, so. The mayor's receiving visitors as long as they aren't members of the press. Did you need help? So I can just head in and talk to McDonough? Go right ahead. His office is open. He likes to make time for everyone when he can. Really? He has nothing to do. No legit mayor duties is what you're telling me. Like funny business around the mayor. Got it? I understand Diamond Diamond City security person, like whatever. Ah, there he is. That stupid smug motherfucker. Ah, yes. I remember you, our new arrival. I was 
wish I was in your shoes, getting to see our glorious city for the first time. How can I help you? Nick Valentine wanted me to see you. Did he now? Some investigation, I assume? You two aren't trying to get me into hot water now, are you? <laughs> ha ha, ha ha. A man named Kellogg used to live in the city. I need to search his house. I see. Well, whatever reasons you have, I take my citizens' privacy very seriously. Even after they've left. I can't allow you to invade someone else's home. That's all there is to it. Are you fucking kidding me? Please, Mayor McDonough. This man, Kellogg, kidnapped my baby. I need to find him. Oh, of course. I, I will do everything in my power to help you overcome this horrible personal tragedy. Yeah, of course. Kellogg. Didn't like him myself. Mm -hmm. Never talk to anyone. I doubt you'll find him. Mm -hmm. But I insist you take the key to his old house. It's been abandoned, though. I'm afraid this whole thing might be fruitless. Just give me that fucking key, bro. And I like how a few seconds ago you were like, Oh, I care about citizens' privacy. But as soon as I mention anything... Housing permit? Looking for a job? Uh... No, I don't need anything. Catch you later, then. Right... Uh, hey, listen, it's, uh, Denise, not Sweetheart. Anyways. So, yeah, I like how he's like, ooh, I want to protect the privacy of my citizens. But as soon as I mention my kidnapped baby, oh, yes, I'll do anything to help you. I'm so sorry. Here's the key. Here's the key to the fucking house that I low-key didn't want you to barge into. But since you guilt-tripped me, and if I say no, I'm gonna look like an asshole... I'm just gonna give you the key. Fucking dick. I can't actually see why a Piper does not like the guy. Like, seriously. He's such a hypocritical little bitch. Oh lord, stop mentioning my age, child! Anyways. Buy a swada? Swada! I'm done. Let me stop. Okay, so Nikki, lucky, lucky, I got the fucking key to the house. Yeah. Right, head in. You do the honor. <laughs> Don't need to tell me twice. Brown. Kellogg must have left something behind. Bet. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. There's really nothing. Small to you? Figured a guy like Kellogg would think big. Oh, wait, what's this? Well, that's one way to hide a room. Get the fuck out. Seriously? A secret room? Wow. Look at this. All of a Merc's favorite things. Hmm. Yes, and now they're becoming all of my favorite things, too. <coughs> Anyways. Water. I'll take this shit. Dirty water. Iguana bits. Ooh, oh my god. Woo, I'm just scavenging everything. Like, this is my fucking scavenging wet dream right now. Nikki, please move. Bye. Damn. Oh lord, I'm having a ball here. Anyways, anyways, let me get back to this. Um, <clears throat> let me see here. What? Take this. Gwyneth Stout beer, forty-four caliber bullets, cigars, San Francisco sunlights. Mm, interesting brand. Won't lead us anywhere on its own, though. Oh, what do you mean? What? The great clockwork dick is stumped? It's synth detective, jackass. Maybe that way you might as well get the make and model right. Damn. Aside, but what about dog meat? Commonwealth mutt like him can track a man's scent for miles. Why don't you go fetch him and let him have a whiff? See if he picks up the trail. Uh, before you head out, uh, I know this is personal business. You have to face Kellogg on your own. Just say so. Besides, you already have plenty of company. Can't all go sniffing through the Commonwealth after one man. Any words of 
wisdom? Kellogg really is the one who kidnapped your son. And he's dangerous. But so are you. Hmm. You don't need to be afraid of him or anything else the Commonwealth throws at you. Goodbye, Nick. Hopefully not forever. I want to see you and your kids safe and sound when you get back. Thanks, Good Nick. Anytime you need help, just come knocking. Thank you. All right. Well, in that case, time we time for me to find Piper. City. Hey, dog meat. Guess what? Dog meat. Get the scent, boy. I'm trusting my family's future to a dog. That's it. Unofficially crazy. <laughs> and he responds, I love it. Alright, dog me. <sighs> Show me the money at this point. Where the fuck's Piper? Like, she's been MIA for how long? Like... I hope she's okay at this point because I still can't get over the what over the fact that she just casually walks away from my last situation. All right, all right, dog meat. I trust you. I'm trusting the process. I'm trusting you. And I feel like we're off to a good start. I can't wait to see my baby again, like... I know it's not my fault he got kidnapped since I was frozen. And I couldn't do anything about it, but... Uh, no, bitch. Help yourself. Anyways... I just... feel like it's still my fault that my baby was kidnapped and my husband is killed. And I know it's like, damn, really? Why are you blaming yourself? But still, it's like... San Francisco Sunlights. Kellogg's preferred brand, all right. Okay, boy. Let's track him. I like to think of it as survivor's guilt. More of, that should have been me, not them type of situation. But you know what? Once I find my baby, I feel like I'll be able to just get rid of the guilt, you know? And start living again. Damn, Piper, where the fuck are you, bro? Like, I'm sad. <gasps> Whoa! What the fuck? Oh, hell no! No! Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no! Nope, nope, no, 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 no. I'm not dealing with any of this bullshit. Fuck you. Fuck off. Woo! Woo! Oh my goodness. What the fuck you mean it mutated? Oh, shit. You know what? Now you fucked up. Where are you, bitch? Dog me, I got you. Oh shit. Okay. We're gone. Holy shit. Alright, so I got a couple of bites from them, so I'm just gonna use uh, right away. Thank you for watching. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next time.